Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by Crayon Tutorials. My name is Craig Reynolds and we've got an interesting tutorial for you all today. Um, today we're going to be looking at making a logo in 3D. Now I generally don't advise making logos in 3D because um, if they're too complex they won't really transfer over to uh, a black or a white logo which is very um, it's very important to be able to have a logo that can work in color, black and white. Um, but we're going to go through here t and learn how to make a 3D logo that is very capable of working in black and or white and also in color. So what you see here already, I already have it set up. Um, as you can see, this is one of the elements, is hydrogen. And we're going to look at how to make it 3D and make it to where it's customized, where you can customize it, you know, easier, where it's not just looks like this plain flat box. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into this. So you see I have a perfect square here. I have it blue. Uh, there's no stroke outline around it, just the box. Um, I have some text. Each of these are text. And what we're going to do is, um, and I, the text I'm using is Myriad Pro. Uh, most computers, I believe, come with it. So if you want to copy the text, that's what I'm using. Well, the font. You can you know, go ahead and do that. And that's Myriad Pro. Um, so you can see that my text is still editable. I don't want it to be editable. So what we're going to do is, is uh, we're going to have everything selected. And then I'm going to do Command and Control, Shift and O. That's going to make outlines. So they're all going to be just pads now. And then what I want to do is still, with everything selected, I want to go ahead and Command and Control G to group everything. So now everything is one layer. And then we're going to go ahead and come up here to Effect, 3D, Extrude, and Bevel. And it's fairly simple to understand here. Now, what I'm going to go ahead and do, though, is I'm going to change this to uh, isometric left. And the reason I want to do that is I'll show you, because um, I have an example to show you, I'll show you the reason why I'm doing um, these presets. And it's mainly for alignment and all that. Um, then we'll come here to extrude depth. I'm going to make that 25, and we'll hit OK. And there you go. Now it's in 3D. But you see it has this flat kind of color to it. And I'm not going to go too much into detail about it. Um, but I will show you some cool tricks to make this look like a real object. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the object menu and we're going to do expand appearance. And with it all still selected, we're going to do command or control shift G. And we're going to do that a couple times to make sure all of our little layers or individual objects are um, not grouped anymore. So I click here. You know, I can click anywhere and they're all their own individual elements. That's very important because if it was all still grouped together or if we didn't expand the, the appearance, I mean, you can't really change the colors or anything like that. Um, so we're going to go ahead and click the face, the front face of this. And uh, we're going to go ahead and select same fill color. And if you are on a PC, that's going to be um, Control 4, I believe. Control 4 will select the same color. And then we're going to go to our opos uh, the opacity, and we're going to make this 70%. Now you see we're getting this like glass-looking effect. And the really cool thing is, is that it didn't just mask off those letters. As you can see, the letters actually have their own um, 3D dimensions to them. So you can actually see the 3D of the letters inside our box here, which is really cool. And then we're going to go ahead and, uh, with our selection tool, select these two side faces. Shift click on those to get those, um, just like both of them. And we're just going to change this to about 90%, not too much, but we want to still be able to tell that the whole actual um, box here is a glass object. And you, you know, you get a really cool effect here. Now, we could go into depth and add some uh, gradients to make some shadows and all of that, but we won't really get into that because I think it looks great as it is. Of course, it could look better, but for a logo, you got to consider, you know, when it's 3D, you got to keep it as simple as possible. So, you know, we got that. And what we want to do is select the whole thing and Command or Control G. We want the whole thing to be grouped now, okay? And to kind of tie this all together, you know, you got to have your company's name. So we'll name it Hydrogen Labs Incorporated. Apparently, these people uh, bottle hydrogen for companies that need hydrogen. It's a real company, by the way. I'm not lying. Well, maybe I'm lying a little bit. Anyways, there you go. I mean, 
that's basically now what I would do with this you know I would just make sure I get this same blue um, and make sure that's a hundred percent there and there you go simple enough right um, and we'll just kind of shrink this down you don't want it too big you don't want it overpowering the text and you can put it off to the side or up above you know it all works out now we'll go ahead and you know work with that don't just make these little elements in these small glass looking um, rectangular prisms to be politically correct um, you know create different different three-dimensional objects I mean make a cylinder or um, get real creative and make a pyramid I haven't really seen a pyramid made in Illustrator I haven't even tried that I might try that one these days um, but see what you can come up with uh, add some strokes to it uh, to get some really cool effects and add some gradients and whatnot a, a, a mesh if you haven't seen my mesh tutorial the gradient mesh tool um, you can look at that and add a gradient mesh to these and see what you can come up with um, so we'll go ahead and come over here to this file that I've made uh, the top one you see I have all these different uh, their own elements that are kind of put together you see they're not as straight as I'd like them to be and not and whatnot but I kind of rushed this just to get this tutorial out um, but you can see what you can do with this. I mean, and that's when we go into the whole um, extrude bevel thing and why I use these presets. Because I have my left, right, top, and bottom. These are all going to be at the angles you want them to be. So this one's at left, this one's at right, that's at the top. I mean, it really helps. Now, if you are going to do your own custom, um, what's it called? Your, you want to, your own custom perspectives on these, you're going to want to at least write down the dimensions you use in that in that in these palettes here or these uh, these little text palettes um, so you know if, if you have these settings here make sure you write that down so the next time you want it at that same angle you know what angle to put it at and that will really help um, I tried doing something like this at work and it really helped because I'm actually making this huge banner for uh, a science spectrum and I actually did something like this and this is what one maybe um, decide to make this tutorial because I thought it would be really neat and I didn't write down the the dimensions or angles that I was working with and I you know how to go back and fix things and it was kind of a hassle so before you start you know make sure you write down those angles and you see you can come up with some really cool stuff and you know I want to see what y'all can come up with you know send me your files show me what you got you know um, comment subscribe and let's see what you come up with this has been Craig Reynolds with Crayon, and look out for some more tutorials.